So today, today we're going to start off with a gathering statement, um, the address, uh, moment of wonder, a short reading, and then we'll get to the speaker and Q&A time with the speaker to be able to um, learn a little bit and get your specific questions answered and to, uh, to really dwell and let that information soak in. We've got meditation and, of course, the regular announcements and our time together for lunch and life happens. I hope to uh, I hope to hear from people. I hope to hear good things, and I hope to comfort you in any bad things that might be shared. So with that, our gathering statement today: You are free to say this to yourself as loud as you want, or as quiet as you want. But today, we gather this morning to connect with each other, with nature and with our human endowments. Being here together builds our sense of community and kinship with each other. So let us listen to each other's stories with open hearts and open minds, both religious food as our ancestors have done for millennia. Now, the address. All right, so the address, I um, was going to do a couple updates about the organization and things like that. Yes, So the first one is the website. Um, we've done a major overhaul on the website. Um, looks a little bit like this now. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> uh, so there's a couple things that I wanted to point out, a couple new resources that we have on the website. First one is you can click on the list I'll be with. Uh, we now have a book list. Uh, and we're adding the books that we've read for the book clubs over the years, and also just uh, various books that people have read um, for leadership and have recommendations. So if you've got recommendations for a good uh, book that seems on topic with Sunday Assembly, what we do in humanism, uh, feel free to give us those recommendations. We'll add them to the book list. Um, but if you're looking for another reading, then there you go. Um, there's also a bunch of other things here, too. We've got resources on uh, you know, finding someone to help you do a um, Ceremony, so that's what the Celebrate Life is. We've got um, two people within the organization that are trained either secular celebrants or humanist celebrants, and they can help you with weddings, uh, you know, funerals, things like that. Um, there's some resources uh, down here to deconstruct the faith. There's some stuff, some, some websites, uh, uh, freedom from religion, uh, you know, things like this. Um, like my organization, so other organizations in the area, we've got this and that. Um, and then, Improvement Health has more resources. Close to that and speak at an assembly are both forms now, uh, but are live online. So if you have an, an idea for an event that you would like to host, go there, fill in the information, and uh, it'll come to us automatically on the board. We'll review it and uh, get back to you about uh, whether or not we'll take on the event and uh, the next steps for all the you know, getting that going. Speaking at an assembly, same thing. If you've got a topic you want to talk about, you click that, and uh, it'll, it'll it's the full speaker form with the video release and everything like that. So you can uh, fill that out, and we'll evaluate this one. The other one was learn about us, and there it is. Uh, there we go. Um, you can learn all about our organization from our history to frequently asked questions, financial transparency. Um, learn about the board, things like that. So if you're kind of new to the organization, this would be a great place to check out a little bit more about us and learn more about um, how we operate. T-shirts. We are still accepting T-shirt uh, uh, requests, so we're going to get a big order of T-shirts once we get all the uh, forms in. Uh, so be sure if you like the T-shirts, I think a lot of people filled it out last time. But if you didn't fill it out last time and you weren't here last time, be sure to fill that out. Um, I can't remember exactly the price, it probably depends on how many were ordered. Um, 15 to 20 bucks or something like that, I can't remember. Yeah. Um, and uh, we've got a new design and everything like that. I think we've got the design sitting out on the table so you can take a look at that at like. And then we need uh, volunteers to help clean up at the end of the assembly today. So raise your hand if you're willing to do help out. Thank you very much. And then, not this time, but next time, we're having a 10-year birthday bash. So
So we've been around since 2014 as an organization, um, and we're going to really live it up in August. So um, we'll have a great speaker, we'll have uh, some various party things, and uh, some food and things like that. So make sure you don't miss the next one. Um, it'll, be, it'll be pretty cool. Okay, well, he's looking for that. Um, how many people are familiar with star brightness magnitudes, like magnitude 4, magnitude 2? Okay, a few people. Good. Yeah, okay. Really quick. It's a reverse logarithmic scale, which is a little bit confusing, but the bottom line is the higher the number, the dimmer the star. So a magnitude 4, you can just barely see. A magnitude 6, you really need binoculars or a telescope. Magnitude 10, you need a telescope, you can't see it at all. A really, really bright star in the sky. If you see a really, really bright star in the sky, it's probably magnitude 1. So that's how that magnitude goes. Now, oh, there we go. Awesome. Now, you've heard of a supernova. I'm going to talk a little bit about a nova, and you'll see why I'm talking about a nova explosion. A nova explosion is when a whole star's worth of hydrogen explodes in a thermonuclear fusion explosion and, um, and blasts all that hydrogen off the star, but the core of the star is still left there. In the case where you have a big red giant star and a little a little dense star like a white dwarf in orbit around each other, the smaller, denser star will pull hydrogen off from the big red giant and it'll build up hydrogen until it gets enough hydrogen to cause enough heat pressure to initiate this nova explosion and the whole star will blaze, becoming a million times brighter than it was before for only a couple days. And this thermonuclear explosion will make a, a nova explosion that you can see in the sky. Okay, very nice. So what does that mean for us? Well, it turns out that over history, you know, humans have been watching the skies. And we found about 10 of these where you have a small, a small hot dense star opening a big red giant, making a nova happen in, in the time it takes to accumulate this. It's called a recurring nova. So it's only about 10 of these. 10 of these, we think that's not very many. That's a really big sky, right? We only know about 10. It gets even worse because almost all of these are pretty far away. And they're far enough away that it'll go from like, um, let's say, uh, a magnitude 20 to a magnitude 14, or maybe a magnitude 16 to a magnitude 10. And as I mentioned before, anything, anything above about a 3 or 4 is just going to be too dim to see. So astronomers know about these. They watch them in telescopes. They know when they're going to go. And they're usually going to be like maybe 100 years, maybe 200 years to accumulate enough hydrogen. So it's a pretty significant amount for astronomers when one of these goes. However, there is one, one of these that is a magnitude uh, 8. And so when it goes, it goes up to a magnitude 2, which is right as the North Star. You can easily see. That one recurring nova that is visible to the naked eye went off last time in its, in its 76 year cycle, I'm sorry, 79 year cycle, in 1946. It's going to go off any minute. Because in 1946, they watched it and they saw the light pattern make this little pattern there. It's dim and then it starts to come back up. And that happened last summer. It's expected to go off sometime between now and maybe the end of September or so. We'll see. But when it goes, if you know where to look, you'll see a bright star that wasn't there before, and you will have been one of the few people that sees a nova explosion in your lifetime. And once this thing is over, I'm sure that I won't have another chance. So the way to do it is complicated. Um, I use a certain method where I start with the Big Dipper, follow the Art Arcturus, drive a spike over to Vega, look at Vega and Arcturus, and I look for Hercules and the constellation that's by, I know the spot. I don't expect you to remember that. I wrote up little instruction sheets. I'll put them right by this Kleenex box. We can take one, and then you will be able to see it. I would highly recommend, I would highly recommend doing it ahead of time. Follow the instructions, know where to look. Because when it goes, you're only going to have maybe, maybe 48, 60 hours before it goes dim again. And in that time, maybe you've got to work one of the days, or it's cloudy, or something like that, you want to know 
the right way to look. Big, big uh, benefit to looking, use a green laser pointer. If you're there with a kid or someone else, these are bright enough to make a visible beam and you can point to a specific star and say that one right there. Really cool. So that's our moment of wonder. Thank you.
oh, I gotta run here, I gotta run there, and run everywhere. Well, you, it, you're not effective if you do that. And you're always running, you're always stressing. And this advice actually comes from my partner, Dr. Darrell Ray. How many people know him? Anybody? You're all supposed to raise your hand again. <laughs> so, uh, so pick one, pick two at the most. Even if you pick two, you're gonna be running around a lot. Uh, but it's important. I got you. You're good. Oh, you got it? Yep. So, uh, there will be a hundred reasons, also, I'm, I'm moving on here, not to do something. So I'm gonna cover some of those points, but let me tell you that there will be a hundred reasons why you should do something. And, uh, Yep. Okay. So, the one big issue that held me back for a long time is my fear of being embarrassed. Um, oh. I got it. You're good. Right. Um, or that somebody says I'm a crackpot, or you know that I'm not so bright. But once you acknowledge that that can happen, that you might get embarrassed, uh, just embrace it, just own it, use it. I promise you, you will not die. Uh, so let me set the stage for this video. So this is a moment where. I am embarrassed, and this is about a year ago, and guess what, I didn't die, I'm still here. So, I am from Toledo, Ohio, but I moved out to Kansas a few years ago, and I got involved with uh, women's rights and LGBTQ uh, plus rights. So, in the Kansas legislature, our elected bit, uh, officials for years were obsessed by marriage equality. But that didn't pick up too much traction with, with the general public. Uh, people were pretty good on that, that, you know, yeah, there should be marriage equality. Um, and so once they realized that, and I'm going to just say, sorry, so if it offends you, you can come punch me later. Republicans, all right, Republicans really worked on that, going against, you know, marriage equality. So in the last few years, they realized it just doesn't go anywhere. We can't, we can't do anything about that. Too bad. So they've changed their tactics, and they've been embracing over the last few years uh, bills that have been sent to them by Alliance Defending Freedom, Family Research Council, Liber Liberty Council, and those are all right-wing groups. And so these bills are a lot of anti-trans leg legislation. And we've seen an onslaught of these, of these bills coming through. I mean, it's, it's incredible, uh, the number. And, uh, and unfortunately, that anti-trans legislation resonates with a lot of Kansas voters, uh, including, unfortunately, a couple of atheists that I know out there. So it, so it really has gained traction. Don't touch marriage equality, but boy, put those anti-trans bills out there. Yeah, we're for it. So a lot of us go to Topeka, where, where the Kansas, Kansas legislature is, all the time to try to fight these horrible bills. So I uh, went last year, about a year ago, and this, this will be a video clip of me being embarrassed when testifying against the anti-trans bill uh, before the House Committee on Health and Human Services. And you may or may not know, or at least in Kansas, if you want to testify, you have to write up your speech, submit it to the committee, and uh, let them read it first so they know what's coming, down, coming for them. Good or bad. Uh, I wrote a one minute speech because I just had this feeling that they weren't going to like what I had to say. <laughs> and uh, the, the, the chairperson is, her nickname is Auntie, uh, or Auntie Brenda. She's, in my estimation, a, a real piece of song. Uh, and I knew that she was going to be alerted to my speech and she was not going to be happy. She, is, she was not. And uh, there would be a danger that she wouldn't even let me talk, that she 
she'd get it, so there was no time for me. Um, and so I waited patiently. There were all kinds of folks that had me speaking uh, against this legislation. And uh, I was tipped off that, uh, yes, indeed, Auntie Brenda was uh, pissed at me. Uh, <laughs> because in the talk, I wrote that uh, a certain senator was transphobic. And, uh, and it was one of her friends, and she, so she wasn't happy. So, uh, all right, let's see if we can do this. Um, and here's Auntie Brenda. I'm feeling short again today, sorry. Um, I'm opposed to SB 180. Uh, and a few weeks ago, when I listened to the uh, discussion in the Senate Public Health and Welfare Committee on Senate Bill 180, I did not hear anything about women's rights, my rights. Did I miss something? No, I did not. Um, I would suggest that the senator who uh, introduced uh, SB 180 um, let everyone know that her true intentions Barbara, yes. I'm sorry. Unless you know that individually, personally, I don't think that you can state that. I was going to say trans. All right. Well, as, I, as I started out earlier, I don't like the name calling. That's not name calling. Um, There's evidence. Ma'am, yes. If you want to give your testimony. Yes, ma'am. You can add live it. I have read your testimony. Yes, ma'am. As has my vice chair and my ranking member to my right here. And it would be best if you add lib what you have and not read what's written, please. Okay. All right, well, I'm going to give everyone the opportunity to be heard. Okay, so uh, as you can see, <laughs> uh, that was pretty embarrassing. Uh, and I went on to say, I, I, I left out the part that uh, Senator, uh, I think her name is Erickson, is a tr transphobe. I mean, you can read what she has, she said, and, it's on the record that indeed she is. I haven't met her in person, but yes. But so I did not say the word transphobic, but I went on and said that white women, I talked about white women, because what could Auntie Brenda do to me? I'm a, I'm a white woman. And so she could not stop that. And so uh, that was embarrassing. And uh, I didn't die. And it's, but it's, you know, now I feel like it's a badge of honor because it's on the record. My whole speech is on the record, on the books, and so is the video. It's out there. So uh, you just got to, you got to realize that you think you're right, but other people think you're not right. Um, all right, let's uh, see if I can go to the back. Okay, so another thing that you, we have to remember is that there's always someone who wants to hold you back. There are all kinds of naysayers out there. Don't let them hold you back from being an activist. Um, so in the spring of, uh, of this year, Westboro Baptist Church, how many people have heard the, of those friendly folks? Yes, they live about an hour away from us. Uh, they put out a protest schedule every year. And it's not a secret. You can find it online if you so desire. You can even go take a quiz to see if you're going to, if you're a good Christian and you're going to heaven. Well, guess what? If you're not, because you don't belong to their church. So I uh, just want to let you know, heads up. Um, so they post their schedule, and so this year's schedule was they were going to picket lots of high school graduations, lots, and including one in my not too far from home. And uh, uh, a former politician in Kansas got online and said, you know, because I put it out there, we were going to counter pick it, or we're going to pick it against these folks, basically. And uh, she said, went on to say that, hey, um, it's a waste of time, and you should not give Westboro any attention. Either they're not worthy of your attention or your energy. Well, folks, that's not why we were really out there. We were out there because once the schedule is out with, with Westboro, and it's at a high school, kids, the students get upset. They get scared. They get nervous because they, these people are, you know, they see them as very vicious people. 
Well, that's not why we were actually going. We went out there to uh, be near the kids as they went in for their graduation and to be there for the parents. And we had numerous parents coming up to us, thank you, and students, you know, they were, they were relieved that we were there, you know, speaking up for them, supporting them so that they could have a good graduation. And Westboro just, you know, didn't matter at that point. And actually this picture is after our event, <laughs> okay, because I'm always like, I'm always like, I like to do goofy things, okay. And so this was me, uh, I walked across the street and said, I need a photo op. I'm going to go stand with Westboro. So that's it. This is not what it looked like during our counter protest. We were over near the student's entrance. So kind of, he should have put up another cut of action. So uh, yeah, that's just me. And they don't harm you. They don't talk to you. They just stand there with their ugly, hateful signs. That's all they do. And then at the end, they walk to their cars and probably stop at a local restaurant and have dinner. And then they go home, just like everyone in the house. Um, you know, just as an aside, Westboro, those folks come from trauma. I'm not excusing them, and this is just an extra bit of information. Their father, uh, the, the, organ, uh, the father of the, of the group, the church, was physically abusive to their his family. So they, they come from a long line of trauma. And I'm not excusing what they do, but I'm just saying that's background knowledge. All right, so so it's, it's important not to listen to the naysayers. They're out there all the time, whether they're your friends, your colleagues, strangers, your family. Your family's really good at it, too, about being naysayers. So just do what's right. All right, uh, next slide. This guy is state rep, Pat Proctor. And I call him my best friend. So if I ever call you my best friend, you just need to look at my face and See if I mean actually mean my enemy. <laughs> I do not like this guy. He is misogynistic, he's homophobic, he's transphobic, and he's petty as you know what. He is petty. And um, so you can see here, he likes to have political meetings at a restaurant. And it's not just any restaurant, it is his wife's restaurant. Sometimes he says it's his restaurant. I don't care. <coughs> But uh, what I do care about is that I think if I want to do a picket or a protest across from this restaurant, it's okay because it's used as his political headquarters. And uh, so at one point, it was the anti-abortion, I'm sorry, uh, bill was coming up. And I thought, I'm organizing a protest against that. And right across the street from his wife's restaurant. So I'm going to tell you, sometimes even your allies will try to scare you into not doing something. And uh, I had, before the protest, invited the local, and I'm a registered Democrat. I invited the local Democrats to join me and support me. So, if we could go to the next slide. Um, this is the response at the top that I got from the local Democrats. I'm sorry, but having your event across the street from Proctor's business is asking for trouble. I'm assuming you are aware of the backlash after the previous one woman protest. Other women in Leavenworth with the same name are now receiving threats and hate mail phone calls. The Dems cannot post your event due to the possibility of violent backlash from Proctor people. I understand why you were doing it, and if you were having it at the event, then I don't know, something happened. Uh, so they were, they were saying, don't do it because you're going to get beat up. I'm old, and I, I will go down with probably just one little shot, right? Okay, on the ground. Uh, so. I thought, well, that could be true. What if that's all true? Am I going to still do this? Well, yes, yes, I am. All right, next slide. And uh, the Dems had a candidate named uh, Schwartz, Harry Schwartz. He wasn't 
He didn't come out fighting like he should have. He even had posts, he had quotes from Ronald Reagan on his Facebook page. Anyway, he came to me on Facebook Messenger unsolicited and said this. And, and Jamie, by the way, I'm sorry, it's my fake name. And it's not for, it's just because I didn't want people at work knowing who I was. I, I just didn't want them minding my business, so nothing crooked or illegal. Uh, hi, Jamie, I want to talk to you about the location of the protest. I, I think holding it at the bottom high is going to cost me votes in my quest to defeat him. I think that holding it at the courthouse is more suitable for this issue because it is a lot of change. Proctor will play the victim and the people will eat it up. Or, yeah, no, eat it up. Okay, so I'd be accused of, oh, you're gonna, you know, somehow cause violence, and then I'm gonna cost Harry Schwartz votes. Well, Harry Schwartz was not much of a candidate, and um, he cost himself votes. That, that's all I'm sorry. He, he was wishy-washy. So, uh, I still said this thought, I'm still going to do this, this is important. And, you know, Proctor is really loud about being, you know, uh, you know, trying to get the anti-abortion thing in place, and I, I thought this is a perfect spot. And so, if I had to do it myself, be out there by myself, I'm going to do it if I get beat up, that's, well, it's not going to be fine, but it's just going to happen. All right, so next picture is, I want you to catch these folks out here. That's me. Uh, that's a protest across the street. What, how many people? Like what, five, six, I can't count, six. And this is what uh, Mr. Pat, that my dear friend Pat, had to say today. Pro-abortion, love for Democrats protested outside our restaurant. What have been in tactical gear with a bullhorn if their arguments for no old card abortion chances are so compelling? Why do they have to resort to intimidating and threatening local businesses to silence opponents? Do I look menacing? God, I don't mean, I don't think so. So, that's typical cat. All right. There weren't hundreds of people out there. There were like six of us. I, I don't know. I, I don't think anyone passing by thought we were a threat. We got lots of honks and lots of wave and lots, lots of support. So he just wants to fan the flames, right? So uh, he did call out the Democrats. You see that. But that's what he always does. He always does. Uh, did things go badly for the dem Dems after that? Not any more than usual, because that's his usual, his business as usual. Uh, because the Dems in Lenore don't speak out for themselves. They do not. They like to play nice. And play nice in Lenore just don't not work. Okay, so. If we can go to the next slide. So Pat did kind of dox, dox me, he kind of did. He put up my name, a picture of my name badge. He is cutting uh, of where I worked. And this is, a, he, he's done this twice. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, I worked at a place that didn't care because they had a hard time, they had a hard time getting staff. So if, even a dead body would be all right. I mean, so nothing happened because Pat put that up there. Uh, about me. Uh, all right, and we can go to the next slide. And uh, he's got, he does have groupies, and so, and this is a recent one, where, uh, and I told Gina that I would make her famous someday. Uh, this is what she had to say about me about uh, some, uh, when I called him out about his anti-LGBTQ uh, antics. And she said, Jay, you are a despicable person by tampering with Pat Proctor's post for veterans that's your you will do anything to include cheap lie and steal to promote your sick agenda. So I was like, okay, Gina. And I, I, I don't argue with them. I just take screenshots and I, I'll do, I, I do tell them, I said, I will use this. <laughs> so they've actually kind of stopped. They don't, you know, a piece of shit, you know, whatever. So, yeah, okay. All right, sticks and stones, right? All right, all right, next slide. And so I want you, 
my advice is to tune into your allies when you can. Uh, if you can go to the next slide then. Uh, you got to recognize your allies might not be your twin. They may need support too. And they may be in, with you with just on one issue or one time. Okay? It doesn't make them any less important. So appreciate the people around you that are your allies. Uh, my allies have been atheists but they also have been Christians and Satanists, Buddhists. Um, I've had allies, you know, support me, and then they turn around, hey, I have this idea, uh, can you set this up for me? And I, I'll say, no, but you pick the time, you pick the date, and I promise you, I will, I will be there with friends. I, you know, I guess they think that I have magical knowledge. I do not. I, you know, I just don't. Um, and some, you know, some people have been with me just on one, one picket. Some people have been with me for a long time. And it's, you just, you work with the people who want to work with you. And, appre and appreciate, you know, the people that do that. Uh, so never, even if you don't agree with them politically, because I think we've had Republicans join us for the, uh, the abortion rights, you know, be a be appreciative of those folks. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. So, 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 be good at. They're your allies. You be good back to them, and you help them when you can. And and I know a lot of allies will have like lots of ideas. Oh, you should do this, and you should do that. You know, you say, I'll support you when you do this. Let them do the things. All right, we're going to skip the next one, so skip that one. All right, so be there for others and be grateful when your homie is there for you. All right, so there are lots of people uh, in plenty of jobs who are afraid to lose their jobs if they speak out. So, uh, what, a couple weeks ago we, we found that out. Uh, on a recent, on, on the day of one of our recent pictures, uh, a woman drove up and said, look, I just got a new job. I could not join you. I can't join you. Um, but I'm really happy that you're out here and doing what you're doing. And in essence, we were speaking up for her child who also couldn't be there. Her, her child is part of the LGBTQ plus community and couldn't be there either. So we were you know, basically speaking up for her and her, her child. All right. So, and as far as homies go, and uh, if you'll go to the next slide, uh, on a recent picket, we had to go on a road trip. And my homie, best friend, is my child, uh, Nikki. And uh, we drove to Wichita to go to the Exodus Church. I don't know if anyone saw that story. It was, it was, I think it made national news. Uh, the, the, Exodus Church in Wichita pulled a stunt where for the month of June they went to their local library and uh, checked out all the LGBTQ books <clears throat> so that no one had access to them for the month of June. Um, they couldn't actually continue and hang on or renew renew their um, the books for another month because the librarians were smart enough to put a hold on all those books, pretending like somebody wanted those books. So they so these the congregation could not, it was pretty smart, could not uh, keep them longer than that that initial um, you know checkout. And so uh, Nikki and I drove to Wichita at the end of June, the last day of June, the last day of Pride Month, and we had a, a picket out there. We had our, our flag, and we had two bags, big bags of LGBTQ books, and we were willing, and we had signs that said that, uh, right there, <laughs> that said that anyone from the congregation could have a free LGBTQ because I thought that was a good thing. Um, there were no takers. I did not have to give away any of my books. 
but I, we would have. Um, so was that a waste of time? No. Because like I said, that woman came over and said, hey, I can't join you, but thank you. And there was also a neighbor who said, I did not know this about this church. Wow. And uh, also, what was really important is there were a lot of kids, a lot of teenagers in those cars that were pulling into the parking lot. And they saw that flag. And they probably recognized that flag. That was the pride flag. And so from now on, they're going to have that thought of both of us out there in front of their church with that flag. They're going to have that thought in their head when their pastor talks to them about how, you know, sinful that lifestyle is. Because I know that's, you know, that's the word they use, lifestyle. So, nobody got folks. But the point was to call attention to people. And uh, to call attention to, to this, this stupid crap that they did. And for those kids to see that, that's planting a seed in their, in their head. All right, uh, next picture is right up there. All right, that symbol right here is uh, Leavenworth Family Pride. I am the proud founder, founder of this group. We've been around for like two years or a little bit more. And the Monarchs, baseball team out in Kansas City, go Monarchs, uh, had Pride Night and we got to be there. And they put our logo up, and I just thought that was the most fantastic thing. It's like, wow, right up on the, you know, the jumbo tribe. And anyway, Leatherwood Family Pride was founded. I founded it with not, with, I did not know how to do that. I didn't have very many supporters at the very beginning. But you know what? If you have long-range goals or you have a vision of what could happen, go, go for it. You know, it's either going to happen or not happen. But you should try. Uh, so anyway, our group, uh, as I said, founded two years ago. Uh, the city of Leavenworth was a community uh, that wasn't, didn't feel safe for the LGBTQ community. Uh, local politicians like my best friend Pat Proctor and school board members are constantly saying terrible things about LGBTQ folks. So our group developed into a very supportive, inclusive group. We had educational activities. We engage in political activities. I kind of pull my numbers into that. They're kind of like shot. Yeah, um, but they're they're good. They're good hearted and they support my ideas here. Uh, we create fun events. We participate in fun events. And I really believe that after two years, we are really changing the social landscape of Leavenworth by hook or by crook. All right, next slide. Uh, and remember, just people will see what you do. People will see what you do, absolutely. Uh, and your presence will impact others whether you ever know it or not. You may not ever find out, but there are people who will be impacted by what you do, your example. All right, uh, this is our float. We've been in two parades so far, a Veterans Day parade and a St. Patrick's Day parade, which sounds bizarre to most people. But we've gotten feedback, especially from the Veterans Day parade, that there were people who were in the closet, and they, but they were attending that parade, and that meant to see that to see us in that parade meant the world to them. That, hey, look, there are people out there like me. There are there's a group now that I can find, that I can be myself, I can feel safe, I can feel included. So, you know, at first it's like, oh, that sounds weird. And we were invited to a um, Juneteenth parade, but nobody was in town, unfortunately. But we, they, uh, they were, they reached out to us. And said, I said, mm -hmm. can't next year. All right, uh, next slide. All right, this slide should be uh, again. Call people out on their mis misdeeds. Okay, don't let it slide. Don't think that you can't do something. You can do something. Um, bring misdeeds to people's attention. 
match. And this is what we did. We had an event. Um, there, were, there are two Lemoore school board members who are continuously, somehow, they spend a good deal of time talking about LGBTQ books on the shelves of the public schools. I mean, it's, it's a madness. They just are, they're focused, they're fixated on this. So, we're going to call it out. And uh, we decided to have a book giveaway right before one of the, uh, the, the school board meetings. We had bags of books, we had signs. And uh, we get, you know, the school board members, particularly the ones who are, the, are you know, anti LGBTQ, we made sure that they saw us. Like, hey, Karen, hey, there is one man, Karen. Hey, Karen, hey, hey Vanessa. And, uh, so, and, the, and it was during, you know, kind of rush hours, so people noticed. And they, they, most people don't pay attention to school board meetings um, in Leavenworth, so they don't know that there, there are people that they've elected who for, for, were talking, you know, like, let's get these books out of here, they're harmful. They didn't know. They know now. Um, all right, uh, next slide. All right, and I, I was hoping this guy was gonna be here today, uh, but he's in Indiana, he lives in Indiana, and, um, sometimes you find yourself uh, going up against Goliath, and he is not Goliath. This is Zachary Parrish, and maybe some of you folks know him already. Um, his Goliath is the group called LifeWise. Does anyone know LifeWise? Okay, yeah, you need to, you need to know. LifeWise is an American educational program founded in 2018. It's a free program, it's evangelical Bible education. And they are taking Ohio, I don't know about Michigan, but Ohio by storm. And it's moving it across the Midwest. It's a group that organizes churches, local churches, to uh, hold once a week Bible lessons. And it's during school time, which is perfectly legal, it has been for a long time, we just didn't know. Uh, and they take the kids from school, move them to another location, and they have these Bible, biblical lessons that are anti non traditional families, they're anti LGBTQ, plus, and they're misogynistic. And, and, and it's, it's, it's horrifying. And, Zachary Parrish has been fighting this fight for several years. I know he contacted me a couple years ago. Hey, how can you help? I've helped in teeny tiny ways. I want to be an ally. I, 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 I do what I can. But he wasn't really moving the needle on getting the, the word out to the public. So they, likewise, was just doing this. They were just, it's just spreading. So, Zachary was sounding the alarm, but nobody was listening until he did a thing. All right, and if you want to click on that real fast. Okay, so what Zachary Parrish did was, he's really smart. He, <laughs> maybe too smart for his own good. He posted the entire curriculum of LifeWise, like all their lessons that they teach school children. He put them all online. He's put them everywhere. He has put them everywhere that anyone could ever think of. And uh, suddenly, everybody's taking notice. Uh, so he's a, to me, he's a whistleblower. And it's pretty extreme. They're, they're after, likewise, after him. They're suing him. And he felt like he had had enough. He had tried all these years contacting ACLU and freedom from religion, and, and they would tell them, well, it's, it's legal. Okay, yeah, it's legal, but they're spreading hate with their biblical messages. So now he's got, he's got the attention of the nation. Uh, there have been countless newspaper stories. Hemet Mehta wrote an uh, article, even though Hemet Mehta thinks that he's, that Zachary will lose his lawsuit. He may lose his lawsuit. He knows it, but he felt it was important. 
you can find uh, Parents Against Lifewise on Facebook. That's where they live, on Facebook. And uh, he's, they're now raising money for his attorney. Uh, he's going to be one. He's going to be a real good one. But he understood that that's the risk that he, I think they want $150,000 or something. I don't know. But you'll, he, they've now done interviews. And like, like I said, lots of uh, newspaper stories. So that's something you should really have on your radar to see what happens to Mr. <coughs> Zachary Parrish. And, uh, and uh, hopefully, I don't, I don't know if he go to jail, but he's not have any money, so they're not going to ever get like out of here. All right, uh, all right, all right. Sometimes, let me tell you, you have to be down to clown. Don't always be serious. Uh, so, <laughs> I'm really good at this on Facebook. Yes, I do spend a lot of time on Facebook because I'm petty. I am so petty, just like my friend, my best friend, Cat Parker. I'm, I'm just as petty as he is. Aren't you? So, anyway, um, I was arguing on Facebook, of course, with a man named David. There he is. And David was defending, we had this whole conversation, uh, he was defending a good Christian man, and this good Christian man would, had bragged about going to pride events and bullying people there. And so this man, David, was defending him with biblical quotes and things, and, and finally I thought, okay, I will have to shut this down, it's time to go to bed, it's past time. So after this very long, stupid conversation, and he's trying to justify using the Bible that it was okay for this other guy to be a bully. He said, and I put up, no, nah, bro, your Bible is filled with murder, infanticide, incest, misogyny, and so much more is creepy. And David was gone off to say, what worldview do you hold? What should I believe in? Well, then I realized, it's time to clown. So, next slide. David. <laughs> for the 
those who have suffered breathe out. Breathe in the barriers that keep you from speaking out. And breathe out, knowing that. 